Hello. Right, this is 15.1, using our resources, and we're looking at rusting. So, uh, you've used lots of words like corrosion, oxidation, uh, tarnishing. They all really mean the same thing. They're all a reaction of metals with oxygen in the air, forming a metal oxide. And almost all metals do this. Even very unreactive metals like copper and silver react slowly over time. You might have seen those uh, rather beautiful green roofs that you get on old buildings. That's copper which is slowly oxidized in the air and form copper oxide and then later on copper carbonate gives that, that lovely green color. Even, even silver left over time will get a very fine kind of grayish layer on the, on the, on the surface which you, you know, your, your maid will polish off uh, once a year if you, if you, if you need her to. Um, so pretty much all metals corrode. Rusting is slightly different. Rusting is uh, a reaction of iron. Only iron can rust. Um, and it's oxidation, but in the presence of air or oxygen and water. And this is fairly easy to prove. So we can do a, a, a simple experiment like this where uh, we, get, we get a nail, it's just an ordinary iron nail there, un, ungalvanized nail. If I put a bit of water in there, then that nail is just sitting in water and in air, slowly that will start to rust. If we take another nail and completely cover it in water, and if we boil the water beforehand, boiling drives out the oxygen that's dissolved in water. So we completely cover it in boiled water, then a layer of oil on the top there and put a stopper in. That'll stop any oxygen getting into the water and that nail should stay unrusted after a week or so. And then we could take another nail and put it in some calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is a drying agent so that prevents any moisture from sitting around the nail. And again, we stick a bung in the top. So this nail here has got air in the test tube, but no water. This nail here has got water, but no air. So these two test tubes shouldn't show any rusting at all because air and water are both needed for rusting to take place. And, and here's one I made earlier. You can see the nail is extensively rusted as a result of sitting in some water and uh, and the air, of course. And what we notice about rust is it's a completely different type of substance, isn't it? It's it's sort of brown and uh, flaky, so the, the rust tends to fall off, and you can see it's forming around the test tube there. Uh, it's very hard to turn that back into iron, so rusting causes billions of, of pounds and dollars of, of uh, uh, damage every year because rusted materials need to be replaced. Um, so how do we go about preventing rusting? Well to prevent rusting, so we've got our, we can imagine our, our piece of iron here and we've got air and, and water or water vapour in the air, you know we talk about the elements don't we, the, the rain and so on. What we need to do is put a barrier between the iron and the air and water so the air and water can't get to the surface of the iron. So that's the simplest way to prevent rusting. We put a barrier between the iron and the air and the water. So if you want to think about ways that we protect against rusting, Think about how we prevent rusting on a bike. So, there we go. 
when I look at a, a, a fairly standard bike here, so we do simple things like we cover the handlebars in rubber or plastic, and that prevents air and water getting to them. Similarly, the, the cables here, the, the cables that, that run between the, the brakes and the gears are covered in a layer of plastic to keep air and water away from them. Of course, the, the main body of the bike is just painted, uh, again, to, to, to produce a, a barrier layer. For things like uh, the, the gears, um, you couldn't paint the gears because, of course, then uh, the paint would just rub off because they're, they're, they're used in the machinery of the bike. So instead, that's, that's covered in a layer of oil. So the oil on the gears and on the, uh, the chain there allows it to move uh, smoothly, but of course it also produces a barrier as well. So that works for, for most parts of the bike. Some parts of the bike, um, painting, oiling, uh, using rubber and plastic doesn't really work. So we use alloys, but I'm gonna talk about alloys in, in the next lesson. Alrighty, um, so so what do we say? We've got uh, plastic or rubber coating, painting, um, adding oil or, or grease, sometimes to, to working parts of a uh, of a of a, a machine. Yeah, and. Uh, painting, oil, grease, plastic, coating. Um, another way of, of, of coating the metal is what's called galvanizing. Galvanizing is where the uh, metal is given a coating of another metal. Uh, usually the, 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 the metal that we're protecting, the iron that we're protecting is dipped in uh, molten zinc or molten tin. tin. Um, and that produces a layer on the surface of the metal. You'll often see galvanized uh, steel uh, or iron railings. So there's a, you've, got a, you've got a railing outside you know, to hold on to when you're going, into a, going up a ramp or something, and then there's a layer of um, tin or zinc on the surface of that. Um, we can also use electroplating. Electroplating works in a similar way. It puts a layer of metal on the surface of the iron. Um, quite often chromium is used in electroplating, which gives those beautiful shiny motorcycle parts that you see on Harley Davidson's and other uh, top of the range motorbikes with the beautiful chromium finish. The, the, the machine's still made out of iron or steel, but the, the chromium finish, obviously it looks nice, but also, um, uh, also again, provides that barrier to, to stop the rusting from taking place. Now, um, when, we, when we galvanize or coat metals with zinc, um, there's two things going on. The zinc provides a barrier, but it might have occurred to you that zinc, in, in the reactivity series, zinc is actually a more reactive metal than iron is. So, so what's going on there? Well, all metals react by releasing electrons. So zinc reacts to, to release a couple of electrons. Iron can react in a similar way to release a couple of electrons or three electrons to make iron three plus. Um, and one of the things we can look at is, is how well these metals do this. Because zinc is more reactive, it releases electrons more readily than iron. Now that's great because the electrons can flow around the metal. So the, the zinc will actually protect the metal everywhere, even if the zinc isn't everywhere. You just bear with me for a moment. Imagine you've got a, a pipe buried under the ground. There's the ground, that's a tree. Uh, and you've got a metal pipe under the ground. You don't want to cover the entire metal pipe in zinc because that would be hugely expensive, but you don't need to. You just need to have a little hatch 
with some stairs down and probably a little inspection kind of area at the top. And then all you do is you put a big lump of zinc on, clamped on to the, um, to the, to the pipe there. And that piece of zinc will control, will, sorry, will protect the whole length of zinc because again, the electrons can move anywhere in the metal pipe because electrons move through metals. Uh, it works for boats as well. If you've got, you know, you've got your boat, uh, you could just clamp a, a lump of zinc to the side of that. And then when that zinc is used up, you just throw it away and get a new piece of zinc, put that back and then it'll carry on protecting the boat from rusting. So that, that's called sacrificial protecting, a protection because you're using the zinc, you're sacrificing the zinc, which is more reactive than iron, uh, to, in order to protect the, the iron in the boat or the pipe or whatever it is. Okay, um, one more method of protecting, uh, or preventing rusting is alloying, which we haven't gone into, but I'll talk about in, in my next lesson.